Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery. But I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. That is from Ephesians um, chapter 5, verses 22 through 33. Now, this is not a lesson about how marriage should be. There is a ton of material on that subject in this passage in Ephesians. That is not what this lesson is about. The lesson is not a continuation of a in-depth study of Ephesians that shall come one day. I only wanted to talk really about one verse. The verse where Paul explains his primary focus in this passage. And he says, rather cryptically, this is a profound mystery, but then he says rather cryptically, but I am talking about Christ and the church. Now, if I had read that verse all by itself, this is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. You would have no idea what I was talking about. So I've read you the context, and you may want to play it again and just meditate on it. There's a lot of just wonderful Holy Spirit guidance in that passage, and each of you in your own particular situation of life may determine what part of it applies to you and, and apply it. But I'm looking at the one thing. He says, I am talking about Christ and the church. And he says that immediately after quoting from Genesis chapter 1, or Genesis chapter 3, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one. And the large, very large passage, which Jesus referred to when he was asked about marriage, is a passage that spans from Genesis 1, verse 20, let's say 26, through that verse in Genesis 3. The, uh, the, entire, uh, the entire thing, or is it Genesis 2? But it's a long passage. And, yes, it's the end of 2. I've always had a problem with numbers. <laughs> That's why I like the New Testament way of referring to Scripture. As we talked about in another lesson, Jesus said, uh, in the account of the bush, you will find. And I like even the way the Hebrews writer puts it. It is written somewhere. But that aside, 
this pa passage that Paul quotes is part of what Jesus quotes. He puts two verses together, thereby combining more than a chapter of Genesis into one cross-reference in the passage that Jesus that we spoke about, where Jesus in uh, it's in Matthew 19, where Jesus is interrogated on marriage, and Paul references the same passage in Genesis. And in that passage, as Jesus referred to it, we saw that this was where God made man in his image and made the male and female and brought the man and woman together. And this is the basis of marriage. Now, Paul quotes the same passage, and then he says, but I'm talking about Christ in the church. And we saw scattered throughout what I read just now, references to the church as the bride of Christ, the church as the body of Christ. The church as the bride of Christ is the body of Christ because the bride is of one body with her husband. And he says, but I'm talking about Christ in the church. But he's talking about human marriage. Well, what is he talking about? Is it Christ in the church or is it human marriage? And Paul is saying it's inseparable. And why is it inseparable? Because marriage is not here just because God needed some way to propagate the earth. I mean, he could have made us parthenogenic like house geckos and we wouldn't need marriage. But we have marriage so that we will understand the relationship of Christ in the church. It is an illustration of Christ in the church. It is an image of Christ in the church. Wait a minute, image. It's an image? It's an image of God's relationship to us? It's in the image of God. Marriage is in the image of God. Show me the coin. Whose inscription is on the coin? Oh, then render to Caesar what has his image on it. And render to God what has his image on it.